chapter 18 this morning, Matthew chapter number 18. I'm convinced my son likes short messages as well. He gives me uh, a lapel mic with a dead battery, so he must be, uh, he must be hungry or something. I'm hoping that I'll hurry up if, uh, if nobody can hear me. I don't know. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter number 18 today. That's a, what's that number? Yeah, yeah. I got this. Uh, we got we got this. You guys can hear me anyway, right? You guys can. No, it's okay. You guys can hear me. You, we'll do it for tonight. It's all good. It's all good. But appreciate you coming out. Man. He was he was on he was on it though, wasn't he? Hey, Amen. He was all on right. It. That's good. That's good. Appreciate that. Matthew chapter eighteen. Once you find your place, verse number twenty one. Would you please stand? Let's honor the word of God together today. Matthew chapter number eighteen, verse number twenty one. Looking down at that verse there, I'm going to read down through verse number thirty five. The Bible says in verse twenty one. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servant saw what was done, they were, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Uh, sh shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye uh, from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Let's have a word of prayer. Our gracious heavenly Father, we do thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for caring for us. We thank you for allowing us to be here this day. We thank you for this passage of scripture, the importance of forgiveness, and what we ask you, Lord, that you just give us exactly what we need from this particular text and the passages we'll be considering today. Holy Spirit of God, I pray that you would have free course uh, in the hearts of your folks that, that make up this assembly today, and help us to be receptive uh, to that which you have for us today. Help me to be a blessing to these dear folks, but I can't do it without you. I could have everything well ordered. I could have it rolled out. I could have a professional uh, speaker put together every word in, in, in its right position. Without your power, it means nothing. And so I beg you, God, to do something great in the hearts of your folks that are here today. And we ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you all so very much for standing. Uh, now, this I, is really, I love how the Lord works. And it was about a week ago or so, uh, I was looking at this passage of scripture and got to this portion. And God just uh, just allowed this outline and just a long outline to just kind of pour out on the side of my uh, the Bible pages here, and uh, it was just very helpful to me personally. And uh, I, I knew I knew right then that God had me, would have me preach this when we got back from vacation, and so I'm thankful for it. Now, looking at this passage of scripture, I, I believe it's a, a wonderful passage of scripture. But uh, considering here, we see Peter. You know, he he might have thought that he was being generous. Uh, at offering or, or, or uh, giving this thought of seven times of forgiveness uh, because the rabbis, they taught that forgiveness uh, three times would have been sufficient. And so therefore, when Peter asked 
asked if, if one should forgive another uh, even uh, after seven incidences of offense uh, and, and forgiveness. Jesus, he said, until 70 times seven. Now, I, it's very important that we understand that the, the greater idea here is not 490 times of forgiveness. But rather, as long as one is willing to ask and seek forgiveness, we ought to be willing to forgive. Listen, even as we need to think about this, even as God is limitless in His mercy, so ought we to be in how we treat and are merciful to others. Amen. Right. Listen, but, but why? But, but why should we? Why should we be a a, 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 a forgiver? Why is Forgiveness so important. Uh, is, it, is it so we can get better sleep at night? Now we, we've all heard a form of the saying that bitterness or or that result of or unforgiveness is like taking poison and hoping the one who offended you dies. You've heard that before, I'm, I'm sure, or heard something similar to that. And so there is certainly some truth to unforgiveness being hurtful uh, to the one who has become bitter. Uh, but it, is that the only reason? Why we ought to be a people that are ready to forgive. As I was thinking about this passage of Scripture, of course, the first thought is we forgive because we're commanded to. Okay, now, the simple explanation is God says it, that settles it. It really don't make it matter if we believe it or not. Amen. God says it, and so we ought to be people who forgive. So we certainly have the argument that God just simply uh, has. Uh, God has simply commanded us, and we ought to be willing to forgive. But as I stepped this past the scripture, God revealed to me uh, just how important forgiveness really is. And so with His gracious enabling this morning, I'd like to preach on this thought for just a few moments, the importance of forgiveness, the importance of forgiveness. So forgiveness is important because, first thing, we have a great debt forgiven us. Yes. Amen. We have, we have a great debt forgiven. Look at verses 23 through verse 26 of our text again. The Bible says, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down, and worship him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Look, the servant in this parable uh, was in debt to the king. He owed him 10,000 talents. That was a debt uh, which he had absolutely no way of paying in and of himself. Now, I don't fully understand the, the difference in the currency from the, uh, the 10,000 talents of that day to, uh, to the finances and the money of 2019. There's certainly a drastic difference. And one could do some calculation. Uh, but I do believe that, that we, we find here, without even needing the exact figures of difference, we understand here that the 10,000 talents was a debt that he couldn't pay for. Right. It was a debt that he owed. It was a debt that he had not the means to, uh, to, to pay for. And so when collection of that debt uh, was, was attempted, his empty hands cost him and his family their lives or their freedom. He and his family were to be sold into slavery so that the payment for that debt could be made. Now listen, this most likely would have meant hard labor, right? A slavery, uh, I mean, always when we think of the word slavery, we always think of, uh, of, of, of the, the negative, uh, and there's a lot of negative there with slavery. Hard labor is certainly one of them. Right? I mean, we're, I think sometimes we think getting up in the morning before a certain time is a curse of hard labor. Uh, and that's, amen, that's, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking, we're talking uh, working to uh, absolute exhaustion. And we're talking, you know, working until, until you feel like you're, you, you may die before the end of the day. I'm talking that sort of hard labor. This is what not only him uh, was, was going to be sold into, but his wife and his children would be sold into because of the debt that he owed. So not only would there be hard labor involved in this, there would be separation involved in this. You think about this for just a moment. Now listen, for myself, uh, I have a hard time. I had a hard time when my children were in Christian camp. Amen. I had a hard time when my when my uh, daughters uh, were away from us for just a few evenings, uh, 
and I knew they were in a good place. I knew they were amongst uh, godly people who loved them and who would care for them and would watch out for them. But I had a hard time being away from them voluntarily for that short amount of time. Amen. Now you imagine being ripped from your family, being ripped from your wife. Uh, I'm having a hard time my wife being at home this morning and not here. I mean, uh, you know, with her, with, with what she's going through right now and, uh, and praying for her. I have a hard time just not being in the same room with her. Imagine being ripped from your wife, being ripped from your children, not having a clue if you'll ever see them again. That's what this, that's, that's what this meant. And not only that, then torture and abuse. Uh, they certainly, uh, when, when we think of the word slavery, we never, we, we, although there was, I'm, I'm sure over the years that there has been several folks who would be slave owners that took decent care of their slaves, but the vast majority of slavery throughout uh, throughout history has come with misuse, abuse, and torture. And, and, and you can imagine that, you know, if it was just him, maybe maybe it wouldn't bother him as bad, but, but you had to think that in the back of his mind he's thinking of the abuse and the torture uh, that would take place uh, with his wife and with his children and all of this because of a debt that he could not pay. Dear friends, I, I, want to, I want you to understand here, there's, I'm sure there's some similarities we could draw here, uh, but, but we were born with a debt that we could never pay. Yeah. Right? The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Listen, we have a debt that we owe, Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. We have a debt that we owe because of our relation to that first man, Adam, and there's absolutely, you know, we have absolutely no means in and of ourselves to be able to pay for that, for that debt. I love Romans chapter 5, what the Bible says in Romans 5 verse 1, it says, therefore be justified by faith. Amen. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Uh, for scarcely, verse 7, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet peradventure. For a good man, some would even dare to die. Verse 8, I love this verse. I love this verse. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. I want you to listen. I hope that you think about that day that you realized what debt you owe. Amen. Maybe it's today. Maybe you're here today. Maybe you've never trusted Jesus as Savior. And maybe this is maybe this is news to you. And dear friend, we're all sinners. The Bible says for all of all of sin to come short of the glory of God. You may be over over uh, overall a pretty decent person. Uh, you might not be uh, involved in any gross moral immorality uh, of any sorts. Uh, but dear friend, when you place your morality or you place your goodness uh, up against the righteous expectation of a holy God, then the Bible teaches us that we will fall short every single. Time. Amen. Maybe you just figured that out today, and maybe you realize today that you that you, that, that you are lost in your sin, and that you have a debt that has not been paid for. <coughs> How did you realize the wonderful truth that that God loved you enough to give His Son? To die in your place. Yeah. I hope that you make a decision today to by faith accept Jesus to be your personal Savior, trusting in Him and only Him to be that one who will forgive you uh, of your sin. Now, but if you are saved today, if you have trusted Christ as Savior, which most likely uh, is probably the majority of the group here uh, today, if you have trusted Christ as your Savior, I hope that you think about that day you realize your sin debt. I hope that you real. I hope that you you consider and think about it that when you realize that you had a debt that you couldn't pay for. Listen, I, I just I just thought about this actually while we're while we're going through this passage of scripture. We notice his his pleading in the in the uh, in, towards the end of this uh, uh, few few verses that I just read to you. The Bible says the servant fell down and worshipped him, saying, "Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all." And listen. We, when, 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 we, when, we, when our heart was broken, when we realized that we were lost and without Jesus Christ, I didn't have to beg and plead uh, 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 asking God or, or, or uh, negotiating with God uh, that if He would just spare me or just give me a little more time, uh, that I would be able to pay Him back. Uh, 
was greater than the debt that you owed as a sinner. Dear brothers and sisters, it is so important that we forgive because we have been forgiven a great debt. But I believe it's important that we forgive not only because we have been forgiven a great debt, but we also, I believe it's important because we have a great example to follow. Look at verse 27. I love this verse. It says, Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion. Amen? Bob says, And loosed him and forgive him the debt. I think of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. The Bible tells us that, For he hath, been, he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Yeah. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I, 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 it's, it, it's amazing to think that our Savior, the one who, who had never offended anyone, had never committed sin, had never wronged anyone, in all ways lived his life perfect, sin-free, uh, had never and, and, and in one area uh, uh, broke the law of God, was perfectly sinless, and yet he died for the sinner. Right. First Peter chapter 2, verse 22, the Bible says, Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. I love first John chapter three, verse five as well. The Bible says, and ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Listen. There has and is and will forever be only one who has or had the right to hold a grudge. Amen. Yeah. Listen, no one will ever be able to violate you or take advantage of you more so than man's offense toward God. You think about it. God created man in his image. God created Adam and Eve and placed them in a perfect environment. Amen. There was no flaw. There was no error in that environment in which God placed Adam and Eve. He, he created them in perfection. Uh, he gave them boundaries to stay within. He, he gave clarity of what, what it meant to walk outside those boundaries. Uh, amen. Uh, but he created them in perfection. Man chose to step outside of those boundaries. Man chose uh, to receive the curse that comes with sin. Uh, man, uh, man chose and to separate themselves from God by walking outside of those boundaries. And God chose to intercede in the stead of man. God chose to pay the ultimate sacrifice to reconcile man back to God. And it's something that we could not do. We did choose to step outside those boundaries. We did choose uh, to separate ourselves from God for all eternity. But there was nothing that we could do in and of ourselves to bring ourselves back to God. Right. But God, in His mercy, God, in His grace, gave His Son to die in our stead. Oh, we have a wonderful example. This is this parable, and this parable really is a clear picture, not only of our, of our normal everyday uh, forgiveness, but it also testifies of the wonderful forgiveness we receive when we trust Jesus Christ to be our personal Savior. Amen? He's good to us. Look, all of, all of the hurts, all of the offenses, all of the evil in this world, they really are a consequence or consequences of sin entering into the world. Look, I know it's not a popular thought here, but I believe we could argue that while in this life we deserve whatever comes our way because of our relation to that first man. I know that's not that's not something anybody that's, that certainly ain't gonna that certainly ain't gonna make anybody feel warm and tingly inside today. That's for sure. Amen. Listen, when when we are faced with these offenses, it is simply because. We are plagued with sin's curse. Amen? No. Now think about the, the admonition. Think about that command, if you will, in Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 32. The Bible says, and be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving.
forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Listen, what an example we have to follow. Yeah, right. The one who could have held a grudge. The one who could have sent all of mankind uh, to, a, to a place called hell uh, that was reserved and created for the devil and those fallen angels. He had every right uh, to send us there. He had, he, he had, he had no obligation uh, to, to uh, go to Calvary. He had absolutely no obligation to provide for us uh, the way of forgiveness. And yet he chose to forgive. What an example. What a great example we have to follow. The only one who could, who could, who could have held the offender eternally accountable for their offense chose mercy. Amen? And listen, and that one expects us to choose the same. Yeah. So we have, we certainly, we have a great uh, forgiveness of our own. We have a great debt forgiven. We have a great example to follow. But I want you to understand, there is a great temptation in the flesh. Uh, look at verse number 28. It says, but the same servant went out. This is, we just read verse 27. Verse 28. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Our flesh desires revenge. When somebody wrongs us, when somebody wrongs us, we are eager to see them get, get to, to, to see them pay back for what they've done to us. Yeah. Right? Even, uh, even thinking back to the Old Testament, think about Jonah. Listen, the, the Ninevites had never really done anything wrong to him, but he just he wanted to see payment for their wickedness. And it didn't really offend him personally. But they, man, he just wanted this. Our flesh it, it desires to see those that are wicked or those that have wronged us, those that have offended us, pay. And listen, we want them to pay good for what they did to us. That's our flesh. Listen, our flesh demand, demands that we're paid back for that which we are owed. Listen, we love God's mercy, though. Hey, Amen. We're thankful. Oh, we're thankful that, that His mercies renew every day. Hey, Amen. We're thankful that, that, is, that, that in that, that, that whole chapter of the Psalms, that at the, at the end of every verse, His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy, oh, we're thankful that His mercy endureth forever. But it can be very difficult for us not to hold a grudge when we've been offended. Right. As we understand that's our flesh. We've identified that that is a desire of the flesh. Listen, can I tell you, our flesh don't just need fixed up. Our flesh don't need polished up in this area. Our flesh is not in need of repair. There is no remedy to remove the temptation from the flesh. Listen, our only hope in this matter is to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Last chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon this earth. It goes through a list. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, and the Bible says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections of and lust. You know that Bible tells that Bible verse tells me that, they, that a mark of genuine salvation. And the Bible says, and, and they that are Christ's. Listen, a mark that you belong to Jesus, a mark that you've made a decision to call on him to be your Savior, uh, repenting of your sin, putting your faith and trust in him as Savior. A mark that you've made that decision, a mark that you've come to him by faith, is that you have crucified the flesh with the affections. And the lust. Listen, that, that, that's, that's what we need today. Amen. We need a bunch of God's people to just die to self. And I'm not talking about actually killing the physical body. Uh, obviously, that's God's timing when this body wears out or He takes and removes the life from us, uh, from us and, 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 and has us step into eternity. That's, on, uh, that's, that's supposed to be up to God. Amen. Uh, but but the, the deeds of the flesh, the members of the flesh, the, that which is associated with the desires of the flesh, we have a responsibility to put those things to death. Amen. we got to kill them. They don't need to be worked over. They don't need to be renewed. Uh, they don't need to be polished up just a little bit. They need to be put to death. Romans chapter 6 verse 5. The Bible says, For if we have been planted together 
in the likeness of his death, we shall also uh, we, sh we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if he be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Listen, God has given you a new life in him. If you're saved today, you are a new creature in Christ, and therefore, uh, this this uh, this temptation in the flesh uh, to hold a grudge, this temptation in the flesh uh, to get bitter when we're offended, uh, we must put that uh, we must put that desire to death by God's right. grace and only by His enabling. We must kill the deeds of the flesh. And so we see that we have a, 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 a great debt that's been forgiven, a great example that we have to follow. We understand that there's a great temptation in the flesh. We also see there that, that forgiveness is important because there is a great effect on fellow servants. There's a great effect on fellow servants. Look at verse 31. So when his fellow servants saw what was done. Listen, it says they were very sorry. When, when the, Bible, the Bible says when his fellow servants saw. Forgiveness is a mark of real Christianity. Yes. Forgiveness, is, when, when, when one can forgive an offense, and one can forgive uh, through some, some difficult, difficult offenses, it is a testimony, it is an evidence that that one has genuinely accepted Christ as Savior and is living for that. We are being watched. Amen? Yeah. We all like to think, hey, listen, just keep your still. Let me, let me be me, and you be you, and don't judge me, and I won't judge you. And we like to think that that's a, that, that, that actually happens, but in all reality, especially if you identify yourself as a Christian, you're being watched. Yes. Everywhere you go, in every place that you're at, whether you're uh, whether whether you are enjoying a recreational time, uh, whether you are in your workplace, if you identify as a Christian, your life is under a microscope. You're being watched. And listen, when those fellow mankind see that you're holding a grudge, and they're able to put the two and two together, you're supposedly forgiven uh, of all your sin to the one who was the only one who had a right to hold a grudge, and you're holding a grudge uh, against this other person, and you're bitter because of this other person, and, and, and what this other person did to you is causing your spiritual growth to be stunted, those fellow mankind, those fellow servants, they see that, and it affects them. Remember. Now, I don't know what kind of effect it's going to have on everybody. Obviously, the effect is going to be a little bit different. But we do know a truth that, you, that it will have an effect on somebody. Romans chapter 14, verse 7 says, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth unto himself. Amen? Listen, when others witness our unforgiving actions, it will affect their lives. For other believers, it may bring them into temptation to get bitter with you or at you. Yeah. Amen. I know that there's times where I'm tempted to get bitter when 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 you all get hurt. Uh, it, I, I want listen, I want I, I want vengeance with you. Right? And I'm sure you're the same way. If I've ever shared a story uh, of, of discouragement with you or something like that, or, or, or was leaning on you just to, 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 uh, to get some encouragement, and I told you how, how maybe I was offended, I'm sure you have that same mentality. I think it's, it's, it's kind of natural for us to say, listen, I'm with you. I'm with you, pal. But let's go get her, right? We not actually had those conversations, but in our mind, we say, "Hey, you know, I think you know, I, 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 I'm bitter with you." But you know, it also could cause your fellow fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to become bitter at you. Yeah, it could tempt them to start uh, holding a grudge against you for your unforgiveness. Within the family of God, unforgiveness hinders revival. There's a story told of Doctor. Uh, John R. Rice, who was asked to uh, preach a revival meeting at the Baptist Church in, in Woodbine, Texas, and uh, there was divisions and strife had broken the heart of the pastor there. Uh, he, he, had, he had resigned, he had left the church. Uh, there was a missionary there uh, nearby that was just hoping to see that church revived and stirred and refreshed. 
and uh, see God's work made, uh, you know, God, God's work be able to be made prosperous there in that local church. And so he asked Dr. Rice if he'd come and he'd preach a revival service, and he found that the whole community was divided. There was just a, a great division. There was just bitterness uh, in, in, in every direction. There was there was there was grudges and unforgiveness in every direction. And one of the, one of the deacons had had. Fist fights, amen. And uh, I, I, when I thought about this story, I thought I'm so glad that we don't have deacons that have fist, fist fights, amen. Uh, but but uh, one or more of the deacons had fist fights uh, and, 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 and quarreled with one another, and uh, and and, and the, the the division had, had affected and reached almost every home that was uh, a, a, a part of that local church. Many had taken a vow to never return to that little church as a result of all the bitterness and all the unforgiveness and division there. And Dr. Rice, he, he never did find out the details of the division, but, but he, he was burdened in his heart. Uh, he was burdened in his soul. He preached against sin. He, he urged God's people to clean up their lives. He, he pleaded with them uh, to make peace with their neighbors. And, and, and night after night, he preached, and those who had been, been angry at others uh, had become, started to become angry with him. One morning, a woman uh, in the community got, got a hold of the telephone, and she was just getting ready to call Dr. Rice to give her a piece of her mind for meddling with all of their affairs. But her 19-year-old stop, uh, son stopped her and said, Mom, you're wrong. I, 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 I have just been out in the woods to pray. I know Brother Rice is right. If we Christians do not get right with each other, we can never have revival. I, for one, am going to try to get right. His mother, she didn't make that call that morning. The next service, Dr. Rice called for, for a time of testimony. With tears streaming down her face, one woman rose up, begging forgiveness of another woman with whom she had quarreled with and some bitterness there. The other woman swiftly rose and came to her feet and to, to meet her and offer that forgiveness. They put their arms around one another. They wept in, in the aisle there. And the confessions came uh, from all parts of the building. Uh, the deep moving of God was upon the people uh, as, they, as they began to make restitution, as they began to ask for forgiveness and seek reconciliation with their brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And to be able to get back to a place of enjoying fellowship again. And the, that afternoon, the news went out like wildfire. That night, that little church building was crowded. Uh, people came to the church who had been who hadn't been there for months. Uh, some would uh, vow that they would never enter that building again. And from that very that very beginning of the service, the Holy Spirit of God was there. Dr. Rice preached the gospel, uh, and at the invitation, men and women accepted Jesus as their personal Savior. There was tears streaming down their faces. Dozens of people were saved. Hundreds of God's people were revived and stirred. And people came from miles uh, to fill that little church house for the rest of those meetings that we. This is, uh, this, I, I want you to understand, this illustration gives both, uh, both sides of the thought. Listen, bitterness will... Sorry for the cutoff on this last video. Uh, I ran out of hard drive space on the camera, so apologize for these little glitches. Apologize for our sound quality, video quality. It's not all that great. We we're just starting to record, video record our services. We've been audio recording for years, of course, but uh, just starting to uh, trying to. Uh, put our services out there on video and so this one of course caught off on the fourth point of the five point outline and I apologize for that but I didn't want to just go ahead and leave it there I wanted to really quickly give you that fifth point and then uh, th that way you kind of have a con complete message of course this is totally awkward for me to be standing here staring at a uh, video recorder and so I apologize I'm sure it will not be the same environment, the same atmosphere as me standing behind that sacred desk and delivering a message. Uh, but I'd like to at least give you that fifth point. Our message today, the, the importance of forgiveness out of Matthew chapter 18 verses 21 through uh, 35. The first point, of course, was we have a, a great debt to forgive, uh, a great debt forgiven. We have certainly been given a, a, a wonderful blessing of forgiveness. The second one is we have a great example to follow. Uh, the third one, we have a great temptation in the flesh, certainly tempted to, uh, to want to, uh, to get revenge, right? And we, we need to be cautious and careful of that. We need to mortify the flesh. That's that's what we need to do. We don't need to polish up this flesh. We don't need to clean it up. And we need to put it to death. And I'm not talking about literally killing the the, the physical flesh, but killing the deeds of the flesh and, and putting uh, to death those things, uh, those those uh, 
driving desires that, that ultimately can, can cause us to, to get into this place of unforgiveness and bitterness. The fourth thing that, that we concluded on, or at least we had just wrapped up with an illustration which was at the end of that point, was there is a great effect on fellow believers. Your unforgiveness will have an effect on uh, other people, fellow servants, my apologies. Your un un uh, unforgiveness, your bitterness will have an effect on others. Um, uh, most certainly, uh, we we talked about that it will have a uh, you'll you'll certainly have an effect on those that are that are fellow servants, uh, those that are saved. Uh, you could cause them to become better with you, um, but you'll certainly have an effect on those around you that are lost and without Jesus Christ. And so we need to be very careful uh, and very cautious because unforgiveness does hinder revival. Our country needs revival. I mean, there is absolutely no question. Anybody who's watching this, I, I, if you if you have a, uh, a love for the Lord, if you have a, a Bible understanding, and if you have an awareness of the surroundings around us, there's absolutely no no question that our country is in great need of revival. If, if our country is ever going to have revival, it's going to be because God's people get right with Him. And one of the things that are hinder, that's going to hinder revival all across this land is bitterness and unforgiveness. And so it certainly does hinder revival, as we saw in that illustration. Now, the last point that you guys have not had a chance to hear yet, uh, the fifth point here was we have a that that forgiveness is important because we have a great consequence in failure. Uh, verses 32 through 35, I'll read them to you. The Bible says, Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. And so I do not believe that this passage of scripture is is an argument for the loss of salvation. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly I do not believe that's what it is, but I also uh, believe that. Uh, there is a consequence to unforgiveness, or there is consequences to unforgiveness, and pretty, pretty awful consequences, really, when you think about it. The first consequence, I believe, is is that unforgiveness uh, hinders fellowship. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, God has an expectation for those that have trusted on uh, Jesus Christ to be their personal Savior, and along with that expectation. Uh, there's consequences when we when we fall short of that expectation and forgiveness is one of those areas we are expected to forgive we are expected to be people that forgive and when we uh, fall out of that expectation it hinders our fellowship with God I do believe that uh, that it, it hurts that fellowship I don't know about you but uh, I want my fellowship to be strong uh, with with God I want my fellowship to be to be sweet uh, with the Lord I, I don't I don't always want to be wondering if if things are right between me and him and I, obviously eternity is secure I'm confident in that I know where I'm going when I die but there are certainly times in my life uh, unforgiveness being one of them uh, where sin and and my flesh and different aspects of my life creep in and they cause a hindrance to my fellowship with the Lord and I certainly want my fellowship to be strong I want my fellowship to be sweet you know the 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 uh, the hindrance to fellowship can cause uh, things like unanswered prayer or uh, a hindrance to our prayer life and I'll tell you prayer is important that's one of the greatest if not the most powerful resource that God's people have as we pray in the name of Jesus uh, the Savior told his disciples that they that by faith uh, they could ask the, the removing of a mountain and if they had faith they could see that mountain uprooted and, and removed uh, and I, I don't see the need to pray for a literal physical mountain to be removed but there's many times that there's great obstacles in my path I want to make sure that my fellowship is is intact I want to make sure that my fellowship is strong not that I'm perfect not that I'm sin free or sinless uh, but th that uh, my my heart is in tune my my uh, uh, my life is in tune with the Holy Spirit's leadership uh, to the point that those things that are known sin are, are being dealt with immediately as the Holy Spirit of God works in my heart. I want those things to be dealt with immediately so that when I need to call on God, I, I don't have... I don't have a, a, a hindrance in that prayer life and, and in, the, in the power of God in my life. And certainly forgiveness is one of those areas. Uh, if, if we are uh, bitter towards somebody 
and but at the same time we're desiring that God would meet some of our needs and we're praying while we're harboring a bitterness or an unforgiveness in our life dear friend I, it really as simple as this you're wasting your breath I, I believe that the Lord is not hearing you until you get that unforgiveness resolved the second thing not only does unforgiveness hinder fellowship but unforgiveness confuses relationship if the mark if forgiveness is a mark of true Christianity and it is uh, then then the 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 absence of of that mark of genuine belief in Christ, that absence of forgiveness in your life, causes confusion on your relationship. Now, I don't, like I said, I don't believe that this is teaching that you can lose your salvation, uh, but there's certainly a case to be made that those that are walking habitually outside of the boundaries of God's Word, are they genuinely saved? Now, I don't believe it's my position to go around and say, well, I think that guy's saved, or, I think that, that gal's saved, or, or not saved, or, or, or you know, I, I don't believe that that's necessarily my position, but we can't help it uh, in our flesh to wonder uh, when we see somebody behaving a certain way, and then also seeing that they testify that Christ is their Savior, that well, why are you living this way if you're proclaiming uh, this uh, to be your Jesus to be your Savior? We we have a hard time understanding that, and we have a hard time accepting uh, that somebody's saved. Now I, nobody's perfect, and everybody's gonna uh, have problems with sin while we're in this old flesh. We understand that, and and uh, I'm not I'm not trying to. I, like I said, I, I don't believe in, in nitpicking and, and, and picking on folks uh, uh, and, and trying to you know figure out their salvation for them. Uh, but those that are living in habitual sin, uh, you certainly always are going to wonder. Now, in this precise area of unforgiveness, well, you see somebody always bitter, always unforgiving. Uh, when that lost person who did the offending uh, is looking at somebody who proclaims Jesus as their Savior, ask for forgiveness and that supposed Christian is not willing to forgive uh, what a confusion to that relationship because I, I believe that it is a even a basic understanding of Christianity uh, is that Christ offers forgiveness and so when we're willing to offer forgiveness for no matter what whatever the offense may be we are demonstrating demonstrating uh, Jesus Christ uh, to the to the lost person uh, to the lost person, uh, that mark of salvation uh, is certainly that that, that uh, mark of salvation testifies of Jesus. I believe I think I said it earlier in the other video that, that was uh, that was intact. Uh, that uh, that is a great testimony, a great uh, proclamation of Jesus Christ to have a a genuine forgiveness or, or that to be part of our uh, of our life and our testimony. And so anyway, so I'm going to conclude it there. I'm going to wrap it up there. Forgiveness is important much more than just being able to sleep at night. I'm thankful it does help. I do believe it does help us be able to sleep better at night. I, I do believe that there is an argument that that forgiveness does have some selfish benefits uh, but I believe it's much more important than just the benefits to self listen I, I hope dear friend I hope if, if you haven't trusted Christ as Savior um, I hope that you'd make a decision to put your faith and your trust in him as your Savior the Bible says we're all sinners uh, we're all sinners we all have a sin debt that we can't uh, that we cannot uh, outwork we can't out buy it the water baptism can't wash it away uh, we have a sin debt that that uh, that we can't outrun uh, and, and God loved us enough he gave his son uh, to die in our place so that when we call on him and by faith receive him as our Savior our sins can be forgiven you stand if you stand in need of forgiveness let today be that day where you trust him as your Savior and call on him let him let him forgive you of your sin debt and and, and allow that relationship to start uh, with you being part of the family of God and, and Jesus being your personal Savior. If you are saved today and you stand in need of, of forgiving someone, maybe you've been wrong. I'm sure that you've been wrong. Every, there's, there's no such thing as a Christian life that, that, that we ever have a chance to live where, where there is no offense. We always, we're, we're going to get offended. Somebody's going to hurt our feelings. Somebody's going to do something to us that is offensive. In, in some cases, sometimes we been just flat out violated and wrong uh, to a point where it's difficult to even explain what happened to us. Can you forgive? I believe that with the enabling of the Holy Spirit of God, you can forgive. And when we consider what Jesus forgave us, the only one 
the only one uh, who could and would have been right and just in holding a grudge, could have held us forever accountable for our sin and for our offense, the only one, instead of holding us accountable uh, for every offense, chose to die in our stead, making the way for eternal forgiveness so that we can live forever. And so if you're saved today, there is nobody that has wronged you more than mankind has wronged God. And he still chose to forgive and he expects you to uh, forgive. I'm not telling you to forgive because, because I just think it's right. I'm telling you to forgive because it's the Bible teaching. God teaches us and expects that his people are a forgiving people. I hope it's a blessing to you. I hope it has helped you today. And I apologize for the split of videos, but I didn't want to just leave it open ending. Especially uh, a, a truth is import, as important as forgiveness. I want to make sure that I come to some sort of conclusion. Again, apologize for the awkwardness of me staring at a camera that is not normal for me. Uh, and uh, so any stuttering and stammering, just blame it on the flesh. If you got a blessing out of it, though, praise the Lord because he is so, so good to us. God bless you, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.